Hello. This morning, um, I have another production job in my shop. Uh, I have to make these linear actuator extensions. Um, we have this linear actuator. A customer of mine has a whole pile of these. Uh, they go in a large machine he's building and they're used to lift a table up and down. There's 40 of these. I've made eight already for a prototype. He's approved the prototype, so now I'm making the remaining 32. This is a, a completed one, and you can see it's uh, bored out to fit over here. There's a hole for a pin, so these can be pinned together. And then inside is the threaded rod, and the way we design these, um, we designed them, this linear actuator is only going to push, it's never going to pull. It's only going to have a, a load pushing down on it. Um, so the way we designed it was so that if we look at just the threaded rod, the end has been machined. When these are assembled, the ends are together and the load from the linear actuator is, is, goes directly from the actuator to the end of the threaded rod. It doesn't pass through the pin or this collar. The pin and the collar are there simply to keep it assembled. So, uh, in order to prevent the pin from actually carrying any load, when this is assembled in use, there'll be an undersized pin will go in there. Um, you can see it's a close fit, it's not going to fall over. Um, the pin will just keep it from falling out this way if, if for some reason it ever became unloaded, although it never should in normal operation. So that's the uh, sort of the part and how it's assembled on there. Now what I have to do is take the threaded rod and the threaded collar and put them together. And the way we're doing this is, is with a roll pin. We'll thread it in and then I will drill a hole through both parts and then press a roll pin in. Now you can just do that, you can thread it in drill, press a roll pin in. But I always like it, whenever I've done this, I always like to have the thread loaded. Um, I like to not just thread it on loose and put the pin through, but I like to thread it on where it needs to be and then say back a nut against it and get a good tight joint so the thread flanks are jammed together. Then you drill and press the roll pin in and when you release the nut, the, the joint is essentially as tight and stiff as if the nut was still there and it gives a uh, good results and every time I've used this type of joint I've had good results with it so I suggested this to the engineer that was designing this and uh, he wanted to do it so um, <clears throat> uh, in order for this to work properly we have to set the correct distance we have to get the two holes here lined up for the pin and then I have to thread this in until it bottoms out against the end of the actuator then I need a nut to back against it. Now, the hole through here is just slightly larger than the hole through here. So I've made this stepped pin where the head just fits close in this piece and the uh, shank of the pin fits close fit in there. So, what I do is start out to put a nut on. And then put the threaded collar on, get it started a little ways. Then put it on, put the setting pin in, and that essentially keeps the two holes, the hole in this and the hole in linear actuator, uh, concentric to each other. Then you screw this in until it bottoms out. And there, just give it a little bit of finger tightness to bottom it out. Spin this on. Then I have to just tap this pin out because it does get jammed in there a little bit. But not too bad. Now I have to tighten the nut against here. And 
And I do that here. I just put a bolt in my vise, set it on until it sits flat. Tighten it. And now the threads in here are loaded against their flanks and it's very stiff and it'll remain that stiff after the roll pin is installed. Because I have 32 of these to do, I'm trying to set it up and make the job go as quickly as possible. Um, so I've got a stop set up in my vise. I'll set the part in. Clamp it, and then I can drill it in the right spot. After it's drilled, I have my belt sander set up here that I can just belt sand the burr off it. Then I come over here to my hydraulic press and I've got a V-block and that's set up and I've made this little uh, plug here. And what this does is it goes into the roll pin to sort of steady it. The next diameter is the one that actually pushes on the roll pin. And the roll pins are an inch and three eighths long and the collar they're going into is an inch and a half diameter uh, so there's an eighth of an inch this is an eighth of an inch shorter and we want to press it in and have it be uh, centered so this little step is a sixteenth of an inch tall and when I press it in when this larger shoulder hits the collar this threaded uh, sorry this roll pin is uh, centered in the part and it just makes it go a, a lot quicker than what I was doing before, which was trying to hammer it in and then finish with the press and then try and press it in with a little half-ass punch I had when I did the prototypes. Need to take the burr off.
And there we can see the roll pin is pretty much centered in the hole. And back to the bolt and vise. This is the only tedious part, spinning the nut off after you're done. And that's the finished part. And although you can't really feel it through the camera, there's no slop in this joint whatsoever. It's very stiff. And that's the finished assembly. So I got about 29 more to go. I got all the threaded rods and the threaded collars. Thanks for watching.